Okay, all we're missing, all we're missing is our color logo. So I'm in Photoshop. I've made a duplicate of my black vector shape, which is a smart object, right? And then I double clicked on the gray. It's a little tricky because you don't want to double click on the image itself, right? You don't want to double click on the name or I will rename it. You want to double click on just the gray around it to get to your layer styles. But layer styles are incredibly effective and helpful and we're going to use them when we do type design as well. So color overlay is the most basic. This just replaces every pixel with this color, right? Pretty basic. Now you'll notice that with each of these options, you also get certain settings here, like a blend mode or opacity. And because my black shape vector smart object is black pixels to begin with, when I play with the opacity with the red, it blends the red with the black. So I'm going to take that red down to about maybe 50%. And I'm going to do something a little different, which you might like, which is I'm going to take an inspiration color and just drag it right into it and put it up in the corner. Now the reason for that is because in Photoshop you can steal color from other things that are open in Photoshop. So, for instance, if I want to steal this exact red, I can go to effects again, I can go right to color overlay, I can click on that red, and then whenever you see this, you can also just steal it from something that's open in Photoshop. Like that, or like this for the yellow, or like this for the blue. And I kind of like that blue. So that's that blue at 50%. If it's at 100%, it's like that. Okay, now what else might I want? I'm going to take it down or maybe even just turn it off so you can see these other things. The other ones that's very helpful is gradient overlay. Gradients are incredibly diverse. That's why they come in all these different folders, right? And then you can modify all of them. So if I like the blue, maybe this is deep, subtle blue, right? If I click on that gradient, then I get to my gradient editor. And then I can even add other colors, like I can add this blue into there. Or I can add black into there. Or I can add red into there as well, right? Or yellow, or anything else. So here I'm playing with it. I can also play with how they arrange themselves on the spectrum, right? And then I can play, once I say OK, I can also play with the angle of it and with the scale, which is basically how squeezed that is. So maybe something like that, really subtle. Maybe change the angle a little bit. Maybe I like that gradient. That's normal mode, that's 100%. But notice these are stacked on top of each other. So my gradient is underneath my color overlay. So if I turn on my color overlay and I make it a color like the yellow, right? And then I lo lower that opacity, that blue and black gradient is going to come through. So what if instead of yellow, I layer it with maybe a red? Actually, I like that blue. I'm just going to do blue on blue on blue, right? And then I can play with how opaque it is. I can also play with its blending mode, right? And these will affect it differently. So it can get pretty complicated. That's just for the color within one object. What if I want to change the color of individual objects? For this, we have to break our vector a little bit, but this is just for the color variation. So what if for this thing, underneath this little swish, I want to make that red. So I'm just going to select it and then duplicate it, Command J, and then I'll change the color overlay for that to the red. And keep the same gradient. Right. So that's just using color overlay and gradient overlay. What if I want to have a yellow eye behind it, even though it's not part of my black shape? Well, then I would go underneath my vector, create a new layer, create a shape, and then fill it 
with that color overlay. So this is filling in the negative shapes. Let's select that color. And then let's do it at 100% normal. And why am I not seeing it? Oh, because I don't have any pixels in that layer. So I need to fill it with something. So I can just say edit fill. And it doesn't matter what I fill it with. Right now it's filled in with black. Because I just need to put that underneath my image. See? All right. Now, what are some of the other effects I can do? And I can always duplicate these and treat them differently. And I like to put a background on that's not just white. I also like to do a background that's black. This is to show the versatility. What does a logo need to be? It needs to be clear, versatile, and engaging. So this is what it would look like on black. Then I make a duplicate of the background, and then I fill that with gray. So it, it needs to look good on black, gray, and white. right? Now, how can you make sure that your, your logo looks good on black? You can give it what's called an offset. And an offset you can do right in your layer styles. And that's going to be a stroke. And I'm going to make that white. And then I can decide how large it is. This is a better way of doing outlines than in Illustrator. So I can do an offset just on the inside, a stroke of white just on the inside, so it shows up on black better. If I do it on this, coming from the center, like it does in Illustrator, you'll see how it's a little bit different. But I don't want the ear and the, the foot to grow together, right? So I'm going to stick with the inside. I like that. Then if I want to add that to this one, I can. I can add that stroke. It's white. And I can decide how big it is. Maybe I want a little bit thinner on that swish underneath. Okay, next there's textures you can play with. There's things like satin and inner glow and inner shadow. And then there's drop shadows, which don't help so much on black, but can help on white or gray. So I put a drop shadow on. I have it on white, you can see what that drop shadow does. It's a very thin drop shadow right now. But it gives me that little edge around it. Now, if you're going to print your color logo, you need to print it on white, right? We're not going to fill a page with black ink just so you have a black background. And that's not, that's not the best way to use photo printers anyway for solid colors. You use graphic printers for that. But it is good for your logo to look good on a variety of backgrounds. Okay, texture is the last thing. And you'll see that up at the top under bevel and emboss. Bevel and emboss will simply give you a highlight and a shadow. And then you can add textures to it. I try not to be too fussy with it. They can get really overdone. And it's strange that the new versions of Photoshop have such odd textures. You can, you can make your own textures. But... Of the presets, I don't like this palm leaf one. I like just the basic water, tight water. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a, a plastered wall. And then you can play with the scale of it. I make it quite a bit smaller, so it's like the texture of paper. And I'm going to soften the depth. So that just gives a slight texture to it that all prints and keeps it as clean as a vector. So if I'm happy with this as my color solution, then I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it as not my black shape vector, but now my color vector PSD. So that's to the desktop. And this is also green. So if I want to change the color, this is the file I go to. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to make it print ready. 
So I have the option to print this, and I say File, Save As, to the desktop as a TIFF with PR in front of it. Remember, this is color, not black. I'm going to use LZW compression always. I'm going to mark this TIFF with purple. Those are the ones that go into my Dropbox folder. And then lastly, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And if I want, it's fine to have the white background, but obviously, if you're going to use this in a website, you would turn off the background, you would save it as a PNG. Right? So if I wanted to do that, I need to close the TIFF, open back up the PSD of my color, turn off the backgrounds, so it's just empty, and then say File, Save a Copy, and save it as a PNG so it doesn't fill it in with white. And then that PNG I'm going to mark with orange because that's an online format. What's the difference between a PNG and a JPEG? A JPEG will always fill in with white. A PNG supports transparency. And this was using, you flatten it before you save it as a TIFF. You don't flatten it before you save it as a PSD. So we added color by using layer styles within Photoshop. We'll be learning how you can add color within Illustrator, but this is much, much better for, for logo design because we're just doing color variations. Keeps it very, very standard because that, that black shape will always be primary. Okay, and then we're done. Then as long as you have your sketch, your black shape, and then your color solution, you have met all the requirements. All right. Now, how do we make the other files? So I just created this little folder, potential digital prints. And I'm thinking, okay, I know I need to print one of my logos, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one in there. But you know what? I really like my black one too, so maybe I'll do that one instead. So I need to print one of those. And then I need some other assignments. So I go to my folder, which if you haven't organized your folder yet, you need to organize it so you can print, you know, to find your projects. So assignment one, I'm going to go to my best PSD. So my resubmission PSD, this one. And I want to make this a print ready file. So how can I do that? What I'm going to do is go to the class Dropbox. And you can find that under Canvas, on our Canvas homepage under links, how to log into this. All of, all of you will need to get in today if you haven't already. We click on Digital Art Class Files, click on Flatten TIFF Files to Print, and you find your folder. So I'm going to find mine. And then I've already put this TIFF in there, but that's the old TIFF. Now I have a new TIFF. So let me put that in. Remember, this is for Flatten TIFF Files. That's why it's called Flatten TIFF Files to Print. All right, now if you look at the flatten TIFF files to print folder, you'll see there are instructions at the end of it. So I'm just going to show you these. These are written instructions for how you can make something print ready. So you open it up, you open up your finished best PSD version in Photoshop. I've done that with assignment one. Then you're going to flatten the image. You go to layers, flatten image, which is dangerous, right? Okay, now you're going to resize the image to change the physical dimensions of your image to fit comfortably within your mat opening. We're doing 8 by 10 mats for the midterm. And we want the resolution to be between 300 and 350. So, what do I do? I'm going to go to image, image size. This is where it gets a little complicated. And when it shows up, I'm going to uncheck for the first time in the class where it says resample. Because what I'm seeing are what these pixel dimensions give me in terms of its resolution and print quality. 
So I need this to fit 